Welcome to another VetMed Academy overview, in this case of the treatment modalities for feline hyperthyroidism. There basically are three general modalities for treatment, and we'll discuss them in the order in which they generally are employed today. Antithyroid drugs or diet, radioactive iodide ablation, and thyroidectomy surgery. The drugs methimazole and carbamazole are the main antithyroid drugs used today. These agents block the synthesis of thyroid hormone. When oral therapy is not practical, methimazole has been formulated into a transdermal preparation and applied to the ear with clear efficacy. Finally, special severely iodide-restricted commercial diets have been prepared and may lead to reduction of thyroid hormone, but only if this diet is fed exclusively, including the restriction of treats, which can contain iodide. The second approach to treatment is to take advantage of the unique tendency for iodide, or molecules with similar structure, to concentrate in functional thyroid tissue. The radioactive compound pertechnotate is concentrated by the same mechanisms as iodide. In this scintigraphic scan of a normal cat on the right, the two lobes of the thyroid gland take up pertechnotate about as intensely as the two salivary glands. Longer acting and more cell damaging radioiodide, that is iodine-131, will be taken up by hyperfunctional tissue as well. In the image on the left, we can see how more intense a unilateral thyroid adenoma is compared to the salivary glands. The normal thyroid gland on the right-hand side of the neck is not lit up at all, so there is a reasonable chance that it will not be damaged by a therapeutic radioiodide dose, allowing eventual recovery of euthyroidism without hypothyroidism. Radioiodide is probably the most effective form of treatment and does not require constant medication nor induction of anesthesia and surgery but special treatment facilities are needed and the cat must be sequestered for a period of time before returning to its owner. Today, in rare cases, surgery may be necessary. Certainly, it can be considered in the 30% of cases that are unilateral, and it is an important procedure to stage and properly diagnose and resect the more rare adenocarcinoma. Downsides of surgery include the potential surgical resection of nerves near the thyroid that can lead to laryngeal paralysis or development of unilateral meiosis due to Horner's syndrome. Also, temporary or permanent hypocalcemia may occur if the majority of parathyroid tissue is removed or damaged. The good news is that if detected early and treated effectively, these elderly cats often have a very good prognosis, unless they have, for example, concomitant diseases like chronic renal failure or irreversible forms of cardiomyopathy. If antithyroid drugs or a low iodide diet has been employed, the downside is that these treatments would be required for the rest of the cat's life. Also, we have now learned that overtreatment by any modality leading to untreated hypothyroidism can exacerbate coexisting renal disease. Antithyroid drugs should be carefully titrated with monitoring of T4 and or TSH. VetMed Academy encourages you to dig deeper into the topic of endocrinology by reviewing our endocrinology playlist or visiting our learning module called Endocrine Concepts. Thanks for watching.